Flosstube, this is Kate Madam Ice and welcome back to my channel. I am so in the mood for talking about cross stitch today. So it's a really good day to make a video. Also I was getting ready and um, just you know at the last second was like it's a red lip kind of day so got my nice bright lips on for you. Um, you'll notice I'm in a different place than usual. This is, I'm actually sitting at my table because I have so much stuff, so much stuff to just show you guys. I'm just going to flash it on by as fast as I can because otherwise I could, I could ramble today. I can feel it. It's a rambly kind of day. Um, and I could go on for hours, I think. So we'll just try to make it brief and keep it moving here. Um, so I just wanted, um, really quickly here. So while I feel like I have a lot of things to show you guys and share with you, and I'm so excited, um, I also feel kind of like I haven't made a lot of progress the last couple weeks. I had a health event. It's not a big deal. Um, I think it was a migraine combined with some other things. I don't really know, um, but what I do know, it was not coronavirus, so we're fine. But um, in this weird time uh, for healthcare, can't be too safe about that. So um, it's kind of hard to tell for a little bit. Like, is this like kind of a normal type of health event for me, or is it a you know more serious event with current events? I don't know. But anyways, so I feel kind of like I didn't get very much done, but I feel like I also have a lot to show you, so it's a great time to film a video. Um, let's see, what are we going to go over? We're going to go over whips. We're going to go over um, a finish. We're going to go over a couple starts that I have planned. I have a bag of haul that if, for some reason, I need to fill in some time. Um, for this video if it's not long enough then I will go over some haul I don't even remember what's in that bag so you know it'll be fun for all of us and then I've got a bunch of shop stuff to share with you that I am just oh so excited about um, and of course we have a giveaway today why do we have a giveaway because in the last three weeks we have reached 1,000 subscribers which is amazing. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with me and talking about cross stitch because if you can't tell, I get energized by cross stitch. So I am so excited to have 1000 people that have decided to stop by and chat with me um, every few weeks whenever I get around to filming. And um, I want to say thank you. So I have a giveaway for y'all. You gotta stick around for it though. Um, it's kind of on the bottom of the pile. So, <laughs> you gotta stick around. But, um, and then that should be, that should be, that should be the video, I think. Okay, so let's hop right in with whips. Which one do we want to do first? Oh no, where is, did I already misplaced something y'all? Yes, I did. Oh, excuse me. I think I just adjusted you. That's okay. First, I'm going to show you Eliza Bell Cox from Hands Across the Sea. Now, I think that I have worked on this since the last time that I talked to you, but I'm not for sure. Um, so, this might be a repeat, but it might not be. Um, either way, I mean, who doesn't love seeing this beautiful... Um, sampler come out right I think I have worked on it since last time so um, I'm trying to get both me and it in the frame it's not gonna work so I have reached this far um, right hand side of the sampler so this is the full width of it um, this is stitched on 46 count linen that was dyed by um, Victoria Motto specifically for this sampler. Um, these are all also cotton Victoria Motto flosses. 
and this is just lovely and I've been showing you this with this thread all kinds of wonky here we go but yeah I am in love with this I am super excited to be all the way on the right hand side of the border and um, next up because now I'll start working down so um, I'll get to stitch just a little bit more border over here and then I get to start this giant one over one reverse, which I'm, I'm excited about. I can't decide if I think it will go fast because there's like a lot more space or if it will go slow because it's one over one. We'll see. We'll see. Oh, I just love this stitch so much. Okay, moving on. Okay, now I have four more whips that I'm going to show you. I can't remember what I've worked on since the last time that I talked to you. A lot has happened. But I have four main things. Well, I'm going to show you three whips, and then one of them is a finish. But the reason I have four main things that I've been working on the last couple weeks is because um, I'm participating in Semi-Sane Stitchers. That's the Facebook group, Semi-Sane Stitchers. I've been participating in their event this month um, for UNO and I'm not going to go into like a ton of detail here but essentially you have four whips and every day you get told which of those four things to work on <laughs> for that day and there's a stitch goal associated so I'm going to the three whips and the one finish were all the four things that I've picked to um, To be in my UNO game. That's what I'm trying to say, which is why I've been working on them. First up, I'm going to talk to you about, I also have them, the three whips are all in Q-snaps because I'm, you know, working on them randomly on random days. So the first one that I want to show you is French Flower Shop by Sunset. And Y'all, I'm pretty excited about the progress that I've gotten with this. Look at that. I have reached the far right hand side of this pattern as well. It's just exciting times for me to get all the way across the top. Um, I started filling in more of this window. I got this whole area stitched in there. Um, I started actually filling in the railing, which I've just left blank for a long time. Um, finished out the last couple things in here and it's it's looking so good I love it and this one um, when it's mostly half stitches and so you know when it says stitch 100 stitches on this it's actually 200 stitches so you get a lot of visual progress from 100 stitches for counting Man, and it looks so good from a distance. Don't look at it too close because there's a lot of like, you stitch with four strands or five strands and those stitches just, you know. I'm not gonna use a laying tool. It's just not gonna happen. But from a distance, you know. What do we say from six feet away, galloping on a horse as long as it looks fine, right? So. Anyways. That is that one. I actually remembered to leave a like, space open on the table for me to put all the things after I get done talking, which is amazing. Okay, next up, Beauty and the Bees from Thomas Kincaid, Disney Dreams Collection. We're just going to deal with all that reflection. Yeah, okay. Um, and I have finished another diagonal. I have, um, if I'm going to finish my weekly challenges today, which I hope to do when I get done editing this video, um, I have some more stitching to do on this one yet today. Just for my weekly challenges for School of Magical Stitches. But look at that! I have this diagonal obviously done and then I've got two more so I've got to fill in this one and this one and then that's the edge of this page um, these two more hundred stitch blocks 
Um, so two more diagonals of, it's 11 blocks tall. Um, and then the diagonal will start getting smaller and smaller until I get done with this page over here. Anyways, I'm loving this. It's just so fun to stitch. And um, I know you kind of have to know what you're looking for when you, when you're looking at this because it is a little bit pixelated you know but that's okay and I was just so excited that I can tell that that is Maurice up there in the balloon let me show you in here so in this balloon cart thing oh, can you see Maurice is right there with his little blue shirt and white sleeves and if you know what you're looking for you can totally tell that that is Maurice right there. So I was super excited to stitch him. Um, you know, the back stitching and stuff will help once once it's done being stitched. But that was just thrilling for me. I've got, um, it'll take the last two diagonals um, to finish up this balloon contraption completely. But um, I think on the next diagonal, there's a village that starts being formed right here. So that's exciting. And then um, on the very edge of this page, the castle will start. It's all very exciting. I'm very, I'm just excited today, guys. Maybe I had too much coffee. <laughs> too much coffee. <laughs> like that could happen. One of my neighbors is out picking her. So this neighbor, there's no way that she would ever know that I lost you, but I've never spoken to her. But she lives like across our fence on the other side. Um, I think her husband passed away this last year because there used to be a guy that came outside a lot too, but he's not been out. But um, recently I was outside and she came out with a broom and was smacking... I don't think she actually hit it, but I think there was a cat in her backyard that she didn't want there. <laughs> so she's like chasing it with a broom. Anyways, I probably shouldn't laugh about that, but it was kind of funny. <laughs> <sighs> All right, last whip. <laughs> um, Mother's Tree by Lavender and Lace. And y'all, if I had been feeling better, this would have been a finish. I swear, it would have been a finished, but as it is, not quite finished. So this is my great grandma, um, and I'm almost done. I need to finish mother of here, and then I have my grandma below that, and then I am done on this piece. And um, I thought about unrolling it for you so you could see the whole thing in its glory, but I think I'm just going to wait to show you that when it's all the way done. So it can be like a reveal. It's really big. <laughs> I don't I don't know if I've unrolled it recently for y'all. But I did for myself recently. And I was like, I forgot how tall this is. There's a lot of names on it. <laughs> so anyways, isn't this just such a sweet name? My, my husband and I disagree on this. Um, I like the name Nellie. I think it's cute. For some reason, he just doesn't like it. But... Um, I think Nellie Mae is just such a cute name. <laughs> it's so cute. Um, but anyways. Uh, and that, those are the, that's the whips I'm going to show you. Because I, like I said, I think I've worked on other things. I'm not really sure. I'm not really sure. Okay, so... Here is my finish. I'm sorry if you guys just buzzed. Ah, oh, I'm getting text. I think I've turned off. So, I'm sorry if you just got a little bit of vibrations. Good vibrations coming your way. Um, anyways, so here is The Secret Garden by Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. It's my finish. I'm so excited. Look at it. First of all, I just want you to, I stitched one over one on 28 count. So like compared to my hand, you know, it's teeny tiny. I just adore it. 
I had so much fun, y'all. Because I actually kept up with the um, book club part of it and participated in the discussions and tried to keep up with the actual stitching part, which I didn't do super great with it. But obviously, I mean, I still did fine because it's done. But um, it was just so, so fun for me. It was a great way to get me back into a book. Um, but anyways, got um. So I made a little bit of adjustment here with the um, Francis Hodgson Burnett because the way that it was charted went with the one over one, it just the stitches weren't gonna show up very well. You wouldn't have been able to see them because um, they would have gotten pulled under the threads too much. So I kind of adjusted that a little bit so that you can read it. Put my initials and date there. And this, um, it's supposed to look like a garden door. So the last part was these hinges and um, this key hole. So the whole time you, it just looks like a cute garden scene with the birds. And then she added those in and it, it looks like a garden door. And that is adorable. And she has some finishing ideas in um, the pattern where she put this in a shadow box and put some like dark green matting cut out the shape of a door and put that in the back and then glued um, like fake flowers all around it so it looked like it was back and like covered by garden it was just it's a lovely finish so i'm going to try to do something similar who knows when that will happen but anyways i'm so excited look at those colors it's the called for colors. Um, this is 28 count brandy wine linen. Um, stitched one over one. All right. Oh, also fun fact. So when I was stitching these two robins, the these two robins are supposed to signify there's a robin in the book that Mary kind of gets to be friends with. And he has a mate in there in the garden. And so I knew this was supposed to be the Robin and his mate. But um, first of all, I was thinking about how kind of crazy it is that there are um, Robins, you know, like the red breasted bird with the light blue eggs, both in North America and Britain. That kind of just intrigued me for a minute. And then I was like, one of these is supposed to be female. So I didn't really like the coloring because I was like, aren't the females less brightly colored than the males? So this sent me on a rabbit hole. Um, and essentially, these are British robins. And British robins, um, they look very similar, the males and females. They're equally bright and colorful. So this is actually a very good depiction of... <laughs> of the British Robins, which would be um, what the book had. Um, our American Robins, the red doesn't go all the way up over their eyes like that. It kind of keeps on their belly. And the females, they, you know, they still got some of that red in it, but it's definitely more muted color. Um, but not the British ones. It made me really appreciate, I mean, I assume she did research about it and that's why she charted it this way. But Anyways, that's just an aside. I um, I really appreciated the design after I went down that rabbit hole. Um, since I'm talking about reading, I'll just briefly show you. This is the book I'm reading right now. It's called Foundling by DM Cornish. If you've seen me do, if you've seen my sewing room tour, I did like a slow pan over my bookshelves, and you would have seen this on there. Um, this is actually the third time that I've read this book, I believe. Um, but I really enjoy the series, Monster Blood Tattoo. Um, the first time I read it, only the first two books were out. There are three. So I read the first two books and loved them. Second time I read this book, I reread it when the third book came out, reread the first and second books, and then got like 
I think I got most of the way through the third book and then got really distracted by something and never finished it. And it bothers me because I want to know how the story ends. And it's been so long, I don't really remember. I remember the like big twist that happens in the third book, but I don't remember how it resolves. And it kind of drives me nuts. So I'm rereading the series again. And I like them. So there's that. Next, I want to talk to you about a couple new starts that I am planning. And if you know me, then you know that I have rules about starting things. And it's, I have to have two finishes before I can have a new start. And um, clearly I have my one finish of The Secret Garden right now. So I need to finish Mother's Tree so I can earn some new starts here. Okay. The... First new start I want to talk about is the next Stitching Book Club because of course I had so much fun with The Secret Garden that there's no way I am not participating in the next one. So I am participating in the next one which will be Frankenstein. I believe it starts in September. Man, you guys, I have so many things that are going to be starting in September. I'll get to it, but I think it starts in September. But she already released some preliminary information. And um, she, this design is a more traditional sampler style design, she says. And she doesn't have a called for floss or fabric because it's a monotone design. So she wants you to choose what makes you think Frankenstein or whatever you like. Um, so I was thinking about it and I can't make up my mind. So I'm going to show you two fabrics and six flosses and please give me any opinions that you may have on this. <laughs> so, um, she said that her model will take two to three skeins of floss. Now, I think that she's stitching it on like 14 count Ada or 28 count linen. I'm going to stitch it on a smaller count. So, the two fabrics I have are both fabrics that I just have in my stash that I love the color of and I keep waiting to find something perfect to stitch on it and I just need to suck it up and use them because I love them so why wouldn't I use them? I'm being paralyzed by waiting for perfection and that's just, you know, maybe you know. But anyway, so the two fabrics I have, one of them is this 46 count um, Silver Mist by Silk Weaver. It's just a really nice I mean that's kind of the color of it it's just a really nice light gray and it's 46 count so it's super teeny tiny and I gotta do that while my eyes will let me <laughs> my husband made fun of me the other day a little bit about that because I was just talking about how I just really like the tiny stitches um, and I really like working with one thread more than two and just the teeny tiny cute stitches make me happy and <laughs> he was like saying it's so funny that I like the super tiny count fabric so much because my eyes are terrible guys like without contacts or glasses I am pretty much blind the world looks like just a blur of color <laughs> when I don't have correction so it's funny that um, I choose to do these super tiny things because my eyes are actually so bad so I have to do it while I'm while I'm young and can do it side notes um, my other one is this squash blossom. Who's this by? Legacy by Legacy Linen. And it's 37 count. And I, for some reason, just really love this color. It's like a nice, um, like yellowy orange. It's like a squash blossom, guys. It was perfectly named. But, um, anyways, so I, there, that's kind of. You're kind of getting it here it looks maybe a little bit more blown out than reality but anyways I love this I love both these fabrics and I just keep waiting for the perfect thing and this feels like it's gonna be the perfect thing okay I think I already talked about how she was gonna she said it was gonna take two skeins of floss y'all my train of thought I don't even know thank you for sticking around and listening because I don't know what's going on but anyways, I have six eight yard skeins of color and cotton that I picked that I love. 
and I can't decide what I want to stitch it with. Now she said two to three skeins of DMC um, is what she's using on hers. So I think she's using two threads on 14 count. I will be using one thread on either 37 or 46 count. So I should need significantly less floss. The point is I only have one skein of each of these. Um, but I have full skeins and I kind of am like, if I run out of floss, I run out of floss. I'll pick something else that looks cool and just keep going. <laughs> It'll be okay. This is my, my thought right now. So I've got these six flosses. This is, here, I'll hold them up against the fabrics. Not all of them go on both of the fabrics, you know. Some of them would work much better on the Silver Mist, and some of them would work much better on the Squash Blossom. So I think what we need to do here, guys, is I need your help figuring out which floss, and then whichever fabric that floss goes better on, we will, we will go with. So, this lovely, lovely green. It's, it's focused, right? People do this to get it to focus on floss, right? Yeah? Okay. Um, this is Seahorse. It's this lovely, um, like, light green. It goes from, like, a bright green to more of a, like, a lime green to a spring green, kind of. It's very pretty. This is Medieval. It's got, like, some purples and grays and blues in it. Gorgeous. This is Rainwashed. It's a nice teal color. This is pine tree. Um, it's got like dark blue to teal to darker teal. Um, this one is called chestnut. And this one is called spicy mustard and it's just this really pretty like gray um, and green and yellow mottled thread. So, um, if you guys have input on which one of these threads I should use, I would appreciate it because, um, six is a lot of options for me. So, um, I don't know why I chose those six. Like, I mean, I was thinking this is for Frankenstein while I was looking for flosses, but for some reason these six just kind of stuck out that I thought they would work for a Frankenstein. All right. I have two more news, three more news starts to talk to you about. <laughs> Y'all need to finish a lot of stuff. Um, okay, so first new start also I think starts September 1st. Um, Leslie LaFleur, I, I was scrolling through Instagram, I just woke up, you know, my eyes kind of opened, still blurry, I open up Instagram, start scrolling, because that's what I do first thing when I wake up, and like one of the first things I saw was this beautiful fabric that Leslie LaFleur from Under the Sea Fabrics posted on Instagram, and I was like, I have to have this, I need to know more about it. Turns out that it is a fabric called Bewitched, um, which is an ex uh, exclusive fabric for a sow that is coming out. Oh, this is gonna be bad because I'm not gonna remember all the details. Let me just pull up the Facebook group really quick so I don't say anything wrong. Sow, it's a mystery sow, and it's called Dark Queen of the Sea. And um, it is a collaboration between Autumn Lane Stitchery, Under the Sea Fabrics, and you. Because it's a mystery stitch along that is going to have elements that are like choose your own adventure. And I am so excited about this, you guys. Um, the fabric is gorgeous. It's like a purple and blue modeled fabric. Um, and it's going to have shiny stuff. There's beads associated. There's specialty fibers associated and like I said I had just woken up and I had zero self-control at this point in time and like literally within minutes of seeing that picture I had ordered the pattern I had ordered the floss 
the specialty fibers, the bead pack, and the fabric. I had ordered all of them like within a couple minutes of waking up because my willpower was very low. <laughs> I don't know guys. So um, that's another thing that I'll be stitching soon. Um, it seems like it's pretty popular so um, if you guys are interested you should check it out. Uh, you get the pattern from Autumn Lane Stitchery's shop on Etsy and then you get you can get the fabric bead pack and specialty fibers from Leslie on Under the Sea Fabrics. Oh, and I would recommend that if you're going to do that, if you're going to get the fabric from Leslie, and it is gorgeous fabric, it's called Bewitched. Um, on the Facebook group for the Stitch Along, the Dark Queen of the Sea Stitch Along, that's what the Facebook group is called. Leslie posted um, pictures of what the fabric looks like, how it looks on all the different fabric types that she's offering. So the linen, the Lugana, the Jobelin, and the Ada. And there is kind of a big difference. They're all gorgeous, but there's a big difference. And so if you're interested and you want to order this, I would really recommend going to that Facebook group and looking at those pictures. I think that's all I have to say about that. Then also in September, I'm planning on starting, um, what is this one? Just a second, I'm gonna, I'm gonna forget. There's so many things that I'm just forgetting them all here. Y'all, I'll cut out some of that thinking time here. But the um, Coming to America, Women of the Mayflower, By with thy needle and thread. I, I was spending all that time trying to find the name. <laughs> you guys, I don't even know anymore. I'm telling you. I don't, my, my brain's scattered. I'm just all over the place. But point is, I'm going to stitch everything. And I'm going to have enough time to do that. So, yeah. Um, but anyways, I will be starting that in September. I ordered that kit like a while ago. That was another one where I saw it and that day I was weak and I was just like, I'll get that kit. And I thought maybe I would forget about it and then it would just arrive at my doorstep, which would be just really exciting. It'd be like a present from myself in the past. I haven't forgotten about it because my planning brain is like, oh, I'm gonna have to finish a lot of stuff in order to start that on time. Whatever, guys. Okay. Last new start to talk about. And this is kind of jumping into shop talk a little bit. So I will be releasing, um, I will be releasing four ornaments, holiday ornaments this year. Um, and my goal is to get the first one released this month, by the end of this month. Um, things, thing is, I haven't started it yet, so I need to do the model stitch. <laughs> um, these four little holiday ornaments, they're all the same size, so they go together nicely if you want to finish them all the same. Um, they're all like similar look. They, I tried to carry floss. Um, from one design to the next as much as I could so that if you wanted to stitch all of them You didn't have to buy a completely new set of floss for everyone um, Each of them uses a combination of DMC and hand dyed fibers from Week Style Works, Gentle Art, or Classic Color Works And what I have to show you today since I haven't started it yet Let's see if I can figure out how to do this. I have not even bobbinated some of these DMC flosses yet. But I will show you the color palette for the first one. I don't know if you can tell. 
because I'm bad at holding this up. Nicole, Nicole from Nicole's Needlework, where are you? I need you to hold up my flosses for me. All right, there we go. You can kind of see. So that's the color palette. All of them will be stitched on this is summer khaki linen um, from Witchelt. And I'm doing them all on 28 count for reasons that I don't want to talk about right now. But um, the 28 count does make them kind of big for ornaments. They're like four inch circle. Um, but I think if you did it on like 32 count, it, they're a little over four inches, um, four inch diameter circle um, with the 28 count. It's four inches exactly with 32 count. If you wanted to go smaller, they would look lovely. Um, all full crosses, minimal amounts of backstitch, and um, no partial stitches. So. I will get that started potentially like this week because um, it's got to be done so I can FFO it and take pictures and make a chart and get it listed. I'll probably put some sneak peeks on Instagram. I do have a separate Instagram for the shop so um, if you don't follow that one it's at designs by Madam Ice. I have it linked below. Um, but that one I put all the shop updates on and that's where I post that I've made new floss tube videos. I put all that on the shop one. Um, my personal Instagram is where I do like stitching updates, but that one is set to private. And I did that on purpose because sometimes I share other things. So um, I have that one set to private. The shop one is public. You can request to follow me on my private one and that's fine. It's also linked below and if I see anything related to cross stitch at all on your profile or if other people that I know are following you or whatever. I accept pretty much everyone except for the creepy bot men that sometimes get in there. Okay guys, one more thing to show you before shop talk. And this is the giveaway you all have been so patient waiting what are we at like my timer says 38 minutes right now so y'all have been so patient waiting for this giveaway and I am so excited about it guys I have made a project bag and notions pouch set for this giveaway and here it is it is this lovely adorable bird fabric <laughs> and it is so cute um i am i'm in love with this print <laughs> look at them they're just adorable um i have this cute flower charm on the zipper pull here and the inside is this really great just print that goes with it green and teal and then um, I have the ma matching little notions pouch to go with it um, the this bag doesn't have a pocket on the inside because I'm giving you a notions pouch so here it is this is big enough for an 11 by 11 Q-snap to go in easily there's plenty of extra room around the outside and oh, it's just such a I will have some of these going up in the shop soon, but haven't made them yet. How do you get this? So I want you to tell me because yesterday we went out and got ice cream and it was wonderful. And I kind of just want more. It was my dinner last night. Ice cream was my dinner. But, um, I want you to tell me what your favorite ice cream is because ice cream is great and I love it and we all should love it. Tell me what your favorite ice cream is in the comments below. And then the next time that I film a video, I will draw a winner from that. Once again, thank you so much for all of you who have subscribed, who join me here every once in a while to do, to talk about cross stitch because it brings me so much joy. Once again, here's the bag. And good luck to everyone. 
Oh, and if you're like lactose intolerant or something, um, you can tell me what your favorite flavor of whatever it is that you can eat is. I don't want to exclude you just because you don't have a favorite ice cream. All right. I don't think I'm going to go through haul again because we're already at like 40 minutes and I've got some shop stuff to tell you about. But, um, pretty much what I'm going to do here. Oh, if you don't want to hear about shop stuff, go ahead. I understand you don't got to listen. It's been a long video anyway. So thank you so much for hanging out today. Thank you so much for chatting and I will see you next time. And I appreciate you. If you do want to hear about shop stuff, let me tell you, I've got a pile here. I'm pretty much just going to flash by everything that I have in this shop right now. Um, some of these I actually don't even have up in the shop yet because I haven't taken pictures yet. So while this video is rendering and all that good stuff uploading, I will be taking pictures and uploading some of these into the shop. But by the time you see this video, these should all be there as of today which is, I don't even know what kind of day it is. It is Sunday, July 12th. This is my inventory as of this morning. Um, okay, so first of all, I wanted to show you, I got a couple custom orders in um, since my last video, and I just wanted to show you guys them really quick. Um, I haven't sent them out yet. I just finished them up, and I just wanted to show you guys so that you know that I love doing custom stuff. Um, if you want, something that I don't offer in the shop um, just reach out to me it makes me feel like I'm helping a friend because I love cross stitch and I know you love cross stitch and if you need a bag to hold your cross stitch in of course I want to make a bag for you I want to help you because you know we all need bags for all of our cross stitch so this my friends is an 11 by 17 um, project bag that I made so I can do 11 by 17 project bags um, I'm just gonna show you here's my 11 by 17 Q snap and it goes in here you know nice and easily um, it's got plenty of room up the top here and on the sides so that if you've got a grime card with lots of extra fabric or whatever it should all fit in there really nicely so um, and I might start offering, I start might start just making a couple 11 by 17 size bags here and there. I don't know how popular that would be. But, um, I can do it. Also, um, I had a viewer, I haven't, you know, I don't want to mention her name because I don't know if she wants me to. But, um, thank you so much for watching my channel. You know who you are. She saw this, um, like, envelope thing that I made for my scroll rods and um, asked if if she, if I could make her some of those so I did now these they have um, just the way that fabric is made it does kind of make a lot of waste um, for fabric but I was able to kind of use it to make some other project bags so it's okay so anyways here's one and I could do these with or without the handle. I could do a zipper top instead of a button closure. Um, and here's the other one. It's this really cute bird print. And this is another example of this fabric has been sitting in my closet waiting for the absolute perfect thing to come along for a long time, years. <laughs> and I'm just, I guess I'm just in a mood where I'm like, the perfect thing isn't ever going to come along if you're always waiting for the perfect thing. So just use it. Use it. It's gorgeous. Um, I will have a couple 11 by 11 uh, project bags of this one coming to the shop. So that's that. Next, I want to talk about... Let's talk about 11 by 11 bags. So I'm just going to show you all of them that I've got in the shop right now. I've still got two of these guys. Um, these are the Stilt Bird 11 by 11s. I have one skull bag. Oh, the Stilt Bird has a pocket. This one does not. It's 
got a cute little skull charm. Oh, and this is the lining. Really cute. Um, I made this. I love this bag so much. Um, this one has a pocket on the inside. It is an avocado bag. Look at it. It's got guacamole and avocado toast and avocados on there and I'm sorry if there's a dog hair. I always lint roll all this stuff right before it goes in because if you have a dog you know you just like it collects. I don't know. So I do my very best to get all of those little presents from Stella off there. But look at all that. Isn't it so cute? <laughs> and this zipper falls just says beads. And let me show you this lining fabric. It's amazing. <laughs> you guys, I love it. Okay, so I've only got one. I've only got one. I need to probably move faster if I'm gonna get through this. Um, I made one more of these globe bags because I had some um, little extras from that 11 by 17 bag. And this one has a pocket as well. I have this gorgeous geisha bag. I am in love with this print, you guys. Um, I just love it. I had to kind of fussy cut. I had two of these, but one of them is already gone. This one doesn't have a pocket in it. And it's got this really pretty zipper pull. And this lining fabric is just gorgeous. It's these beautiful fans. Oh, anyways, so I've just got this one um, left. And then this one, I'm trying this out and we'll see how it goes. But I'm selling this as a bundle. I've got um, this like Sewing Notions project bag. And I'm selling it with the Notions pouch. So you get both of these and it's just a little bit cheaper bundle pricing. Um, and I have a project bag made out of this. Oh, it's just white lining here. Um, it's like the white pretty lining with some flowers on it. Um, I have a project bag made out of this that I made when I was first like trying to figure out how to make project bags. <laughs> So it's got a different closure and all that, but I have one made out of this print and I love it. You can put anything in there because anything is stitching related. Um, all right, next I have a few um, little Notions pouches. I've got one pineapple one right now with the green lining. I've got a skeleton one with that fun, you know, stripey lining. I've got two um, little geisha no notions pouches. And so I tried to fussy cut them so that, you know, no matter what you get, you're getting, you know, a little bit. It's a nice, nice print either way. And then I've got two of these Marauders mat notions pouches available. So um, there's that. Next, I have a selection of, I'm calling them floss pockets. And I'm calling them floss pockets because some lovely viewer commented and said, suggested that name and I love it. And so I took it. And thank you so much <laughs> for doing that. Oh, by the way, I'm having problems with comments on YouTube. It's not notifying me of comments. So if you comment and I haven't commented back, I'm very sorry. I'll try to spend some time today going back through videos and trying to catch any that I didn't respond to. But these floss pockets, you can use them for a lot of things. It's just like a cute little different type of notions pouch, but um, they open up really nice and big for you so you can see everything in there. Um, zip up nice, but I like to use them if you have a pattern, okay, if you like to stitch smalls, and you have smalls that don't have a ton of flosses in them, like maybe less than 15, then what I like to do is put all the bobbins in this pouch um, and put that in my project bag so that it doesn't, all the bobbins don't unfurl 
on the bottom of your project bag. They're, they're kind of kept nice and tucked in tidy and these things. That's what I like to use them for, but you could put a lot of stuff in them. Um, so I'm calling them floss pockets. So I've got this pineapple. I think I've got three with the blue poles and just this one with green. Um, and if there are two different pole colors, I, I put them as options in the shop so you can choose which one you want. I've got two of these like pretty poppy, um, two with the green poles, two with the cream poles. Now I, these are from a line of fabric that um, I've just had forever, a bunch of this line. So I made actually three different types of floss pockets using these these fabrics. So here's the second one. It's from that same line. And I love this one actually. It's my favorite. It's got this nice red inside. The fun black pole. Okay, and then here's the third poppy pocket. And it's got this print on the inside. Then um, the last one that I have are these lovely um, fan print pockets and it's just got a cream print on the inside um, and I've got marine poles and black two of each and that is it for the shop one last thing here so this video is probably gonna be an hour I I'm pretty sure that, I think, I hope, that everyone who makes bags and things to sell, it is really hard to give up all of them. I just want to keep one of everything because um, they're all cute. I wouldn't make a bag if I didn't love the fabric that I was making it out of. Um, so I, I have a hard time letting go. So I had this idea um, to make a quilt out of the scraps of leftovers from all my project bags and that idea made me very happy because um you know it's just sad to to have to give up every bag you make i don't know maybe i'm just selfish but um so i have taken the scraps of i think every bag that i have made for the shop i'm pretty sure um, I've, I'm pretty sure I was able to find scraps of all of them and just based on what was left over from from the bags I'm, I'm able to like patch together mishmash blocks um, for a quilt that someday might happen but right now I'm just focusing on the quilt blocks so you know sometimes I have to fussy cut the fabric so there's only like really weird little slivers left sometimes you know it just depends on the bag and what I'm doing with them so I don't always have the same sizes of leftover scraps or anything so it's just I'm just putting what I have left together in a way that ends up making a square and they're all the same size so here's the first one I just am gonna run through them quickly so here's the first one with the scraps from the bird bag from the giveaway here's um, some scraps from that custom bag I made Here's some scraps from the globe. This is some scraps from the Peter Pan bag that I had in my shop for a while. I only had like a couple tiny little strips of this one left. So, you know, you work with what you have. Um, here's the llama bags. I've got more of this fabric. So if you want um, a bag made out of this, just let me know and I can make one for you. Pineapples. Um, I have these garden print bags. For a little while, this was the Marauders map. I was lucky that I had a, <laughs> a scrap that still had like a pretty <laughs> chunk of that fabric because that one was one where I had to fussy cut. Um, Dope bird. As you can see, it's just 
Some of them made like classic blocks like this. It's like just a classic nine patch and some of them I just didn't have have that <laughs> left. So here's another classic nine patch. And here's the sewing print. Oh yeah. These bags were so fun. I was lucky to get a cut of this one. Um, I didn't have much to choose from, but it worked out. Here's my Disney bag. The vintage Disney. The schools. Um, this is a bag that's a gift. It's crazy colors, don't worry about it. Um, avocado bag. And, oh, I thought this one turned out really well. I was it had really weird scraps again, but I was able to make it work pretty well, I think. And the last one is this geisha bag block. Anyways, I've jabbered way too long. Um, I, I'm very happy that any of you stuck this out. If you did, um, give me a hollow below so I know that someone did. <laughs> but anyways, um, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for hanging out. I am obviously very pepped up today about cross hitch talk. So <laughs> um, anyways, I appreciate you all so much and I appreciate that you choose to come and visit me in my home. Um, and I hope you're all doing well. Bye.